I'm J.D. Frost. Welcome to the Accountability Show. Thank you for tuning in again. And uh, today we have a really special show. I'm actually discussing entities uh, with a gentleman named Brian Cosby. And if you remember from the past episodes, if you haven't watched them, go back because we're talking about entity formation for your business. It's the first step to laying the appropriate accounting firm foundation for your business. I got to figure out a better way to say that, but whatever. It's laying the foundation for your business, for your accounting. And entity formation is a part of that. We were talking about the how, the why, the what of forming entities. And I just want to remind you, too, that there's different ways, different entities to form. And the easiest entity to form is a sole proprietorship. The second easiest entity to form is a general partnership limited liability company, limited partnerships, S Corp, C Corporation. Those are the most popular types of entities that you can form. And they all have their different aspects uh, that is good for tax purposes, that's good for liability purposes, that's good for if you are going to have partners changing and interacting throughout the, you know, the life of the entity. And so what we're trying to focus on in this show called the accountability show is holding you accountable to these steps that we are taking, that we're explaining to you, that I'm talking to you about for your business so that you can lay a firm foundation for the accounting of your business. Because if you don't know what the scoreboard is, if you don't know what the score is in your business, it's going to be really difficult to make decisions. It's going to be difficult to know which direction to go. And what we want to do with the accountability show is create a direction for you, create education, knowledge, so that you are able to make these decisions. So part of this show is talking with actual people, talking with them, coaching with them, talking with them about what they are thinking about doing in their own lives. And so you have the opportunity to do that at the end of each month. We have an episode like today's episode where we are talking with an actual person with their specific situation, their specific questions and everything. So if you're interested in that and participate in it throughout the show, in any episode, comment below. Let me know that you would like to be on the show and we can talk. We were doing this through a Zoom call. I actually can't even see Brian right now, but we're doing this through a Zoom call so I can hear him, but I can't see him. But he can see me and you can see me, hopefully. So the idea here is we're going to be talking with Brian Cosby, and I appreciate you coming on the show, Brian, and being willing. He's the pastor at Wayside Presbyterian Church and came to NougaCon, actually, a few weeks ago and, you know, I think was impacted by the speakers and might have caused him to start doing some of his own um, own businesses. He might have already had some businesses. I really have no idea, and that's what we're going to discover here today. So welcome to the show, Brian. I appreciate you being on here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was uh, quite the honor. Awesome, man. Um, so, I want to talk to you a little bit about like why did you decide to come on the show? What uh, you know, what kind of things were you interested in? And maybe give us just a little bit of your background of entrepreneurship in in your own life. Sure. So, I mean, part of part of this whole discussion for me uh, has been a growing uh, interest in doing a number of things uh, in addition to. Uh, of course, serving serving Wayside. Uh, I've got a, an amazing team uh, up at Wayside uh, Presbyterian Church, and um, they they fully support are behind me, and uh, I'm I'm so grateful for that. Uh, but I also have a desire to uh, help and and other people and to give. Uh, one of the things that really impacted me at NugaCon was uh, I can't remember uh, which speaker, but I think actually several speakers talked about. Uh, this desire to be generous and to right. and to give, and what a, I kept thinking, you know, what a, what a great desire that is to grow a business, to scale a business, so that you can you can give and actually make some pretty significant impact on on people's lives. So that's one of the things that's really driving me. And uh, so about a year or so, a year and a half ago, I uh, I formed a an LLC. Uh, to, uh, to really focus on real estate investing. And I started to do a lot of reading, listening to a lot of audiobooks. Um, and I knew nothing about the, and I wish I had this show, uh, Jonathan. <laughs> I appreciate uh, I mean, you saying I, that. I really, knew, I really knew nothing about uh, forming those things. So it's kind of just uh, learning through YouTube and, and the internet. Uh, but I ended up forming uh, an LLC, Footpath Capital LLC. And awesome. the, for the purpose of, uh, flip 
flipping, for buy and hold, for wholesaling, just real estate investing. And, um, you know, and then it, then this other piece of it fell in that I hadn't, I knew nothing about. And that was the whole tax uh, side of it. Um, right. Not knowing, you know, how to file. Do I file? I mean, what does pass through uh, even mean? Uh, so for me right now at this point, and part of the, the reason I want to do this is number one, I want to help people. I want to be generous, uh, provide for my own family long term. Um, these are things that have that's kind of motivating me to, to do it. Uh, but, you know, I'm as an LLC, uh, should I at this point still be taxed as an LLC or when does it make sense to be taxed as something else like an S corp? Right. Yeah. So when you started that LLC, um, footpath capital, is that what you called it? Yes. Yeah. yeah footpath foot, capital. Footpath capital. That's awesome. I love that name. Um, it's a single member LLC, I assume. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. And so you've got some real estate that you held inside of it. Like, is it uh, single family homes? Yeah. Up until this point, uh, we, we've mainly just focused on, on flipping. Uh, we had to get rid of some debt and, and to, uh, to build up a little bit of capital. Uh, but moving into, we're in, we're in a couple of deals right now, uh, moving into buy and hold, uh, properties. And, and that's another question I'd, I'd have for you actually is, you know, I hear some, like Grant uh, Cardone and others that would really push for, you know, start no less than eight units, 12 units, 16 units right. to begin with. And I, I, you know, I don't know how uh, to even to begin at that, at that size. Um, right. But anyway. Yeah. So going to the entity formation, I mean, you formed footpath capital. That's a single member LLC. I mean, that's the easiest type of entity to form and it's good that you formed one because now you've got some liability protection, right? And so you've right. done some flips uh, inside of there, and now you're kind of ready to go to the next level. I mean, really, you don't need to form any other kind of an entity at this point in time unless you decide to go into like an 8, 12-unit type of investment. You probably would want to separate that out from your Footpath Capital LLC. So you're kind of, you know, when you're taking that next big step, when you're deciding to take a bigger risk and you want to protect what you already have, you would form an entity for that actual investment. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. I mean, just from a, you know, we'll, we'll get a little bit off here, but you know, I love the fact that you're talking about that you want to help more people. I mean, that's one thing that resonates a ton with me and what the speakers that we heard at NougaCon, you know, Hank Norman, he got up there and he was talking mm -hmm. about, Hey, I just want to help. Like you need to help people, right? Like I do tax right. services. You're a pastor. Meg does marketing services. Jay's a videographer. But really, people just want to be helped, right? We use our skills. Show me how you're going to help for help me. Show your show me how you're going to care for me, right? And right. that's a part of what we're doing now. You're like, how in the world do I get into an eight to twelve unit deal? Well, I mean, I can help you with that right now because one reason that we do what we do is we connect people with each other. That's one thing mm -hmm. that we do, and so we help you as an investor that you're looking for this type of next level investment, right? Like you're trying to go there, like, right. how do I find it? Where do I get the time? Am I going to get into a bad deal? Well, the best way to get into a deal like that when you ever haven't, haven't done it before is to partner with somebody, to collaborate right. with somebody. Um, that's what we talk about at Croft, value, vibe, collaboration. And we actually, and I mean, I'm not meaning this in like a self-promoting kind of way. I'm just saying we actually have a 12 unit deal right now where we're raising $350,000. So in order to get into a deal like that, you would want to partner with somebody to see how it works before you go and try to do it right. on your own. That will limit your liability tremendously. Now, going back to entity formation, if you were to make an investment with us, just using that as an example, okay? I'm not saying yeah, like, yeah, hey, sure. this is what you have to do. Um, but if you made an investment with us, you would want to form a separate entity, call it, what would you call your next entity? Do you know? <laughs> uh, do you, I, I have no idea. Do you have any children? Uh, I do. What's, uh, three, what's the initials kids. of, uh, what would be, what's the initial of the first name? What, what would the three of them be? Uh, L G K L G K. So you start L G K realty LLC 
and you would create that bank account and you would put the money that you want to make this investment in. And that's the way that you would make that investment. Gotcha. So you would form that entity to protect yourself and to protect footpath uh, capital and yourself personally from this new investment that you collaborate with um, in a partnership. Gotcha. So even though, you know, our investment, let's just keep using that as an example, we have a separate LLC for this investment, right? But you would be mm -hmm. an owner in that LLC through your LLC. Yeah. And so even if you're not, uh, you know, flipping the house or investing in a rental property or whatever you want to, since you have this investment that you're not really familiar with, you want to have a separate LLC set up just for that specific investment to protect yourself. So one, one thing that's really helpful, you know, one, one thing that uh, people have talked about is because the Tennessee uh, filing fees and uh, those kinds of things are, are so high, people have been looking at other states uh, to form uh, an LLC in to do business in their own state where they live. Is that even, is that wise? Do people, uh, is yes. people doing that? Yeah. So you can form those entities in those other states. Uh, j but just because you live in Tennessee, you expose yourself to the possibility that you could have nexus in Tennessee, even though you form those entities in the other states. So you've got okay. that potential out there, but yes, people form uh, entities in Nevada. Wyoming's pretty popular. Um, obviously you've heard Delaware for, for C right. corporations, um, even some, uh, in Florida, right. Um, mm -hmm. so there's that opportunity to form those because of those filing fees and that, and that possible tax, uh, from Tennessee at the entity, at the entity level. Now, you have know, you, mm -hmm. yeah. I was just going to say, have, have you seen people when they, when they file these or, or they form these LLCs, have you seen a lot of people do this, uh, in, in a part-time role or are they pretty, all, are they all in? Are they pretty committed? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a little bit difficult to kind of commit yourself to a 12 unit, you know, apartment deal or, um, right. you know, a multi-unit apartment deal. Um, when, when you're working some other job, right? Like you got to really look at that deal, make sure it's going to work. I highly, highly recommend you get with somebody who has been in real estate before that is actually looking at 20, 30 deals every single week you know, mm -hmm. to find the ones that are the best so that you protect yourself that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, some, some do it part time. Uh, the ones that are the most successful, you know, jump all in or they collaborate with somebody else and partner with somebody else in order for that to, to happen. Okay. Cause okay. it's, I mean, I mean, there's, cause I have my call, uh, and I love what I do right? at, yeah. at, at, at Wayside. Um, and so I, like for the, the, this, the, one of the deals I'm in right now, uh, I'm, I've hired a project manager to basically represent my company, uh, in the, in the process, but, uh, as still as an independent contractor. Um, but I just haven't seen how it would work for a part-time, uh, you know, business owner to scale, uh, in, in a bigger way and stay part-time. Right. Yeah. So the easiest way to scale in a bigger way is to partner up with somebody to partner up with somebody who is finding deals. That's what we're doing at Golden Croft. Uh, we are creating these different opportunities for, for others to invest that are, you know, part time that are doing this in a passive way. We are creating mm -hmm. a way for you to partner with us so that you don't have to look at the deal. You're just literally contributing capital into that and becoming a partner in that deal so that you can stay concentrated on your call and your, um, your primary purpose. Right. Gotcha. And that's why they call it passive income, right? It's, it's in a passive way. You don't have to be active in it. You're literally just becoming a part of a partnership that, uh, is that's its sole purpose is to go out there and find those deals. And you have people that are represented there in their area of expertise that's helping you accomplish that. And the way to grow and scale that is you're, you're going to start to, put your initial capital in there. We have a deal right now that uh, is going to be one and a half times your money in 12 to 18 months. Well, then in a year you get one and a half times your money. And then the next year you do it again and you do it again and again, wow. because you're always starting to scale up with those other partnerships and with those other deal makers that are out there. Right. So that's right. the way to do it. Now, you know, most investors or most people that are trying to find, 
these other investments are like, oh, well, I need to go out and do it on my own. And you can. I mean, that's Grant Cardone says it all the time. You can go do it on your own. You can uh, partner with somebody. Um, or he says, you know, invest with him at Cardone Capital, right? So, you know, the easiest way to grow and scale, especially when you are focused on your call, would be to partner with somebody else. Right. Okay. In order to create a specific plan to follow to really build wealth and grow into those specific deals. You know, you and I, I feel like I have a pretty good amount of experience, Brian, but like I can't go out there and find a 200 unit apartment deal. That's not just right. not going to happen. Like I'm going to partner with somebody, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel um, like uh, finding, finding the smaller deals are actually fairly easy. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a number of tools out there yes. that uh, allow you to find, whether it's prop stream, flipster, a number of these on, online tools, but for the, for their larger, um, larger projects, larger deals, it's, it's harder to, to know what you're doing. It's a lot more risk. Um, yes. Like in, in some ways, I mean, in other ways, because there's more units, there's less risk. Yeah. But, and that's, uh, that's what I would argue with you is it is, it's way less risk once you create the deal and you put it all together and it's going, yeah, it's way yeah. less risk. You're actually, it's easier to get into the single family and to do the flips and to find those deals, but then it's much riskier once you have the deal done and then you're moving right. forward. Right. Yeah. Like, right. because you're right. relying on that one door, one. right? That's right. Exactly. So, uh, this allows you to spread your risk, but it's harder to find. Well, I mean, the harder the deal to get closed, the more lucrative it most likely is going to be, no mm. matter what. So the easier the deal is to find and close, the less lucrative it's probably going to be. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, one of the reasons that uh, I've, I've wanted to become part of uh, your team there at J.D. Frost is it's not just the, the tax, you know, filing a tax return, but um, getting this uh, kind of business advice, uh, big picture throughout the year. That's a, it's a big, uh, a big draw for someone like me that is looking not only for, uh, well, you know, what do I do with my, my truck? I mean, are there, are there ways to, to get write-offs for mileage or, or the lease or something? Right. Um, but more than that, looking to very practically how to scale, uh, in a, in a unique, maybe situation like me where, I've got a full-time call um, and I'm trying to do this for, for a long time sake for, for being generous and giving and, and also for my family. Right. On, so, yeah. And I mean, that's one thing that we're trying to do as well as create these products and services and this, and this atmosphere, this culture, right. To be able to help you with more than just the tax work, right? Like you signed up with us for doing your tax work and that's awesome. But we also have the rainmaker club and we have this group that we're starting March 1st within the Rainmaker Club, that's a group of 10 people. And this is something that I was actually going to call you about, so we'll talk about it right now, but it's a group of 10 people that's an accountability group about the 12 steps to becoming a Rainmaker. And so mm -hmm. you meet with this group throughout a whole year. We meet 12 times in person. Lynn Gibson is helping me with it because we see there's so many, you called it part-time, I'll go down that road with you, like part-time kind of entrepreneurs, right? And so mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the entrepreneur's time system. So how do you still live out your call, still make that your priority, but how do you section off your week to where you're still spending time on these type of activity, activities, your entrepreneur activities, your real estate yeah. stuff? How do you cipher off those different times throughout the week? How do you create your day to where you're spending time doing that each day? And, and, and how do you actually practically make that happen? And so that's what this group is going to be teaching entrepreneurs, business owners, people like yourself, and it's going to be turned into kind of an accountability group and a group in which you come and learn every single month, these different strategies on how to grow and scale your business, become a rainmaker. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So, you know, I think that that's a little bit what's different about us is like even this show, the accountability show, right? Like we're talking about entity formation. We're talking about your real estate. We're discussing how do you really grow and scale that? How do you get into a 12 unit deal? Well, becoming a part of an organization like JD Frost and company as self-serving as that might sound, but it's true. Get around a group of people that's thinking about going to get a 12 unit apartment complex. That's how you get right. into it. Right. 
Right. I yeah. Mean, who you sur- or surround yourself with. I mean, I've, I've definitely learned that. In yes. This, yeah. Uh, and shaping, shaping your, your goals, ambitions, you know, you get a lot around a lot of people and they say that you can't do it. They're naysayers. You, um, and yet, you know, I'm, I'm involved in a, a number of different things, teaching, uh, and I'm in the military and, and, you know, it's, it's really comes down to that, that time piece, but surrounding yourself that, that have that vision to, to do a lot. I mean, if you call it 10 X or whatever you want to call it, but, uh, to do a lot, um, but, but keeping the right goals, the right priorities. And, right. Um, and that's been super helpful in following what, and I'm not blowing smoke here, but super helpful in following what you're doing uh, there at, at J.D. Frost. And so, yeah, grateful for that. Yeah, awesome. I appreciate it. Um, well, thank you so much for being on the show, Brian. I really appreciate it, man. Um, I think that we, you know, hopefully I helped you a little bit. I uh, gave you yeah. a little bit of direction. Um, that's the idea, uh, for us to be, uh, getting on here, getting on this show together, being able to talk about like what's really going on and like, what's your, really your next step. So I appreciate you being out, uh, willing to be out there, put yourself out there, be vulnerable with that. Um, I really appreciate it. And obviously I really appreciate you becoming a client of JD Frost and company and looking forward <laughs> to working with you, man. I know that, uh, we, we probably already got the team already reaching out to you if they haven't already, they will yeah, be they shortly. Have. Um, and you know, really I, I, I challenge you, I'd love for you to be a part of this first group that's starting March 1st, if that's something you might be interested in too, man. Um, just yeah, throwing that I'm out, interested. just throwing that out there to you too. I can send you some more information about that offline here. Um, but thank you so much for watching the accountability show when you're watching like, and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can see this show pop up automatically. Then you'll already know when a new episode drops. Uh, we want to be, uh, interacting with you. Uh, every single week and next month we are talking about how to form bank accounts why to form bank accounts how to form separate bank accounts some of it sounds pretty elementary but there is a specific reason why we're doing that so brian make sure you tune into those um as they start to uh drop out there on in the youtube world on absolutely. the youtube channel so. absolutely thanks so much brian i really appreciate it thanks for tuning into accountability show and we'll see you next week